Welcome. This overview video outlines the entire second order RLC circuit time domain solution process using ordinary differential equations. This solution overview is for series RLC natural response, which is based upon initial conditions like the initial inductor current I sub L or the initial capacitor voltage V sub C. The solution process for a driven RLC circuit with a step function input contains many of the same steps shown for the natural response differential equation solution process. The red symbol by the voltage source indicates a step function. This equation describes the natural response of the series RLC circuit. But how do we get from the circuit to the differential equation? We know the branch relationships for resistors, inductors, and capacitors. These branch relationships define the current through a circuit element as a function of the voltage across the circuit element. But how do we get the series RLC differential equation from the branch relationships? The answer is Kirchhoff's laws. In the case of this series RLC circuit, we can write Kirchhoff's voltage law, KVL, for the loop. KVL says that the sum of the voltages around the loop equals zero. We can put voltage branch relationship expressions into the KVL equation to generate the series RLC differential equation to be solved. Using Kirchhoff's voltage law, KVL, we generated this differential equation for the series RLC circuit. Now how do we solve this differential equation? Notice that the differential equation contains the current as a function of time, the first derivative of current as a function of time, and the second derivative of current as a function of time. What possible solution function has the original function in the derivatives of the solution function? The exponential function does. We know that the derivative of the exponential function e to the st is the constant s times the exponential function itself. That suggests the exponential function as a likely solution to the RLC differential equation. s is the complex frequency sigma plus j omega with units of 1 over time. Substitute the proposed exponential function into the differential equation. Calculate the derivatives and factor out the exponential term. Setting the exponential function itself equal to zero provides only a trivial solution. So the quantity in the brackets must equal zero. This is the characteristic equation for the differential equation in terms of R, L, C, and the complex frequency S. Solving the characteristic equation for S using the quadratic formula, we get equations for S1 and S2, the roots of the characteristic equation. Because there are two roots, the general form of the solution to the differential equation as two exponential terms. K1 and K2 in the general form of the differential equation solution are constants which will need to be calculated. Different possible values for resistance, capacitance, and inductance determine the response case for the circuit, overdamped, critically damped, or underdamped. The signal curves shown are the loop current as a function of time. In the critically damped response, the quantity under the square root sign becomes zero and S1 and S2 are equal. 
In the underdamped case, the quantity under the square root sign is negative, making the characteristic roots complex, leading to an exponentially decaying sinusoidal response with time on the horizontal axis. The exponential function solution and the damping cases of the characteristic roots also apply to forced response, like the step response shown here. An underdamped step response exhibits overshoot and ringing. The decaying exponential curve is commonly referred to as ringing. Because the R, L, and C expressions in the characteristic root equations can become unwieldy, different variables like alpha or zeta are introduced to both simplify and clarify. The values of the damping ratio zeta relative to 1 correspond to the three damping cases of the series RLC natural response. The different cases of damping also influence the final form of the solution equation. In the overdamped case, the solution has two real roots that are unequal. Both terms in the solution equation are decaying exponentials. In the underdamped case, the two roots S1 and S2 are complex, and variables sigma and omega d are introduced for convenience and clarity. The two roots are complex conjugates. This leads to the exponentially decaying sinusoidal shape of the current function. The final step in the RLC differential equation solution process is to solve for the values of the constants k1 and k2 for each of the different damping cases. Calculating the constants k1 and k2 utilizes initial conditions, the value of the current function at time zero and the value of the derivative of the current function at time zero. Here are some initial condition expressions for the overdamped case. To finish, here is a summary list of the steps in the RLC differential equation solution process. This video started with KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law to solve a series RLC circuit. Thank you for watching and learning with us.